Why? Why did you want to be with a distributor? Um, I think the simple reason is that, uh, you know, I, I left the DA's office in uh, early 2017 and uh, hung up my shingle, had a few clients, but was really, I call it semi-retired. I guess that's a term that a lot of people don't really understand, but uh, it just meant that I, I wanted to keep uh, my mind sharp, so I stayed in the profession, but uh, I didn't want to work. Uh, too hard, but uh, uh, as I kind of looked around, I saw uh, there's a need for public service, and that's really kind of who I am. I, I spent almost my entire career as a prosecutor, and uh, so I thought, I have a contribution to make, and I saw particularly that, um, you know, when Kathy uh, uh, Darling Allen uh, um, retired, that uh, somebody needed to step in, um, that uh, that was a role I thought I could undertake. Uh, I, I knew it was a, a role that had a lot of reliance on the election code, the government code, regulations, so it was something that uh, I thought somebody like myself, an attorney, could bring a skill set to. And uh, so it was uh, just sort of a, a, a sense of public service that led me to uh, toss my hat in the ring. And uh, I, was, I was also particularly concerned that whoever the board chose, it be someone local. Uh, you know, I've made this my home. Uh, I intentionally moved back here in 2012 to work for Steve Carlton and to uh, basically uh, live out the rest of my life here in Shasta County. And uh, I just felt strongly that whoever fills a role like the clerk registrar should be someone local. Um, and uh, that's kind of what motivated me as well. So um, you said you didn't want to work really hard and now look at you. <laughs> yeah, uh, be careful what you wish for, I guess. Uh, y you know, my thoughts on that changed over time. I found that uh, I was enjoying a pleasant semi-retirement. You know, I, I took clients who either had very interesting cases or who were the sort of people that really wouldn't be able to afford legal representation um, from, you know, people who were going to bill them $300, $400 an hour. And uh, that was satisfying on a certain level. But I still found myself spending a lot of time uh, you know, looking at YouTube videos and, and Amazon Prime shows and uh, uh, I just felt, you know, um, I'm a little too young to settle back into my armchair. So uh, I was ready to work harder. Um, but obviously, uh, after a few years of not doing so, uh, it, it's been a wake up call. Uh, I've shared with people, I've, I've been on the job now four days total here. I was sworn in on the 3rd, and then we had the holiday last week. Uh, but it's just been nonstop. Um, as we sit here today, uh, the election on November 5th is 129 days out. Uh, or no, that's not right. Less than that. Okay. So, <laughs> I mean, it's coming fast. And uh, there are signposts that we're trying to meet almost every day now. The next big one is July 15th, where we do the declaration of candidacy. You know, people are going to be coming down to the Market Street office and signing up to run for school board trustee or uh, city council of Reading. Um, uh, lots and lots of open positions. And of course, it's a presidential election, so that just makes it even more significant. Um, so uh, uh, I've been really gratified that uh, as I've gotten here, uh, you know, uh, the staff have been wonderful. Uh, we're integrating well. Um, I, I'm confident we're going to form a really strong team. And a lot of my time has been spent meeting with them, kind of understanding uh, the org chart and what every person here does kind of on the daily. And uh, uh, it's just been... Uh, very, very busy. Um, but I'm still super enthused about it. 
I really am confident that uh, um, we're going to have a successful election on November 5th. How, how has it gone? Has there been any surprises or like, oh my gosh, or, or anything like that? Or about as um, you expected? It's pretty much what I expected. Uh, you know, it is very heavily based on the election code. Almost everything we do, uh, there's some reference to an election code section. And so I found myself uh, doing a little bit of uh, interpretive work there. Um, and uh, there's a lot of, of uh, documentation. Um, we're constantly uh, creating documents or filing documents with the state or preparing internal uh, training guides. And uh, uh, so there's, it's, it's a very uh, uh, information rich environment. And uh, I'm just, my nature is to try and stay on top of that, to try and drink all the information in and process it. And uh, uh, the one thing I've learned is it's really helpful to be able to roll up my sleeves and actually uh, do some of the work, get involved in it, because that kind of imprints it. That makes it real and uh, helps me master it. You know so, what people are really doing. Like yeah, you, you, you know, it's, you can hear other people talk about it, but when you actually get in there and see it being done and help do it yourself, it, it gets real. Um, so... Uh, I think it's just going to be more of that and more intense as uh, the next few weeks unfold. But uh, I'm also really confident that um, this, this uh, group of people has been doing this very well. Uh, you know, there's always been mistakes. Nobody's perfect. Um, but I think there's a, a willingness on the part of everyone here to kind of learn from those mistakes, make sure they don't happen again, um, root out the problems and correct them. Um, and there's a, a real uh, service ethos. People here want to serve uh, Shasta County. They want to they want to do a good job for the citizens here. Probably the, the majority that, that appointed you, and, and definitely some of the people there, uh, you know, in the in the supervisors' chambers, are looking to you to push back on the state. How do you feel about that? You know, it's, it's particularly you know the, the hand counting and things like that. Certainly. Um, well, I've explained a, a number of uh, folks who sort of represent that uh, side of the coin, if you will, that uh, I see this as uh, at least two phases. There's the election, and then there's after the election. R right now, all my energies have to be concentrated on uh, bringing out a successful election November 5th. And um, so, you know, there are some things that simply aren't possible, either because uh, I don't have the time or the budgetary resources uh, to make those happen before um, November 5th. Uh, so I, I basically say those ideas are aspirational to the extent that they are doable. Uh, the time to undertake the, the, the exploration of that is early 2025, once the election has been put to bed. You know, other things are simply uh, non-starters. I mean, uh, I realize there's a strong push for hand counting. Um, I have no philosophical objection to hand counting, but the legislature has spoken. A AB 969 definitively uh, uh, forbade hand counting for practically every county in California. I think there's maybe one that has a registered voter roll below 1,000. Um, so it's a non-starter, uh, and uh, it's something that we can work to lobby the legislature, uh, we can try to, you know, convince them of the benefits, but as an operational goal, it's just not going to happen, certainly not for the November 5th election. Um, there are other things like uh, trying to clean up the uh, registration rolls. Uh, you know, I've had people approach me and tell me I've received two ballots, uh, on a number of occasions. I've had people tell me they've received the ballot of a deceased relative for three different election cycles. So clearly there are some things slipping through the cracks 
and we can do better to try and clean those roles up. But again, um, you know, sort of massive uh, changes are not uh, simply on the cards uh, in the first phase, which is up to the election. Um, I'm committed to working with the team here to have a smooth, fair, and transparent election. And probably the biggest contribution I plan to make is pushing information out to the public. What is it that we're doing? What is it that uh, uh, our daily operations are like? If they have questions about the heart voting machine, or they have questions about uh, um, what the poll workers are doing, or how the canvas is conducted, um, we're going to be very proactive in trying to get that information out to people. Um, and, uh, you know, that I think will help uh, increase people's confidence. That, during those interviews with everybody, uh, the word transparency, I mean, if that was a drinking uh, game, you know, <laughs> I'd be on the floor. <laughs> that, the transparency seems yes. to be, you know, a real, real concern, a real uh, emphasis. I think it's something that uh, it's, a, it's a, a quick way to encapsulate sort of this desire on the part of the public to know more about what goes on. Um, you know, I chose a poor metaphor at one point. I said that the elections department was like a black box, that I didn't really know what was going on in it, but I knew what went into it. Um, I, in hindsight, wish I hadn't said that, but what I was really trying to convey is that there's a certain op opacity, there's a certain lack of clarity about the, the, the way elections are conducted. And um, I just think, I can remember back to my civics class in eighth grade where we learned a lot about how representative government worked and people have a natural hunger to understand how, how their government is formed and how it works on a daily basis. And so I think uh, people are entitled to know that and it's part of my job, part of my team's job to get that information out to them. Anything else you'd like to say? Well, uh, I guess the only other thing I'd conclude is that uh, we're gonna need poll workers. Uh, there are gonna be opportunities to apply. Uh, if you check our website or uh, if you don't want to mess around with computers, if you call the office here, uh, someone will uh, speak to you. Uh, we would definitely like people who are interested in participating in the election process by being a poll worker, uh, working on the canvas, to express that interest. And, and I personally am very interested in bringing on board a, a diverse range of uh, Shasta County citizens to assist in the election process. Uh, that that's going to help with transparency as well. Can you assure them of their safety, or is there any concern about that? I know in recent past elections, pe some people have either said, "I'm not going to do it," or I've I've been accosted and you know criticized, whatever. Certainly, I, I mean, uh, I definitely want to take those concerns seriously. Uh, I think personally, I'm going to uh, be working very hard to restore a certain level of civility. Uh, I intend to emphasize in training uh, uh, both my staff and the poll workers who are working the canvas that, uh, and the observers that uh, there's an appropriate way to observe. And if you see something um, that looks problematic or concerns you, um, you're not the umpire, you know, you don't uh, jump up and uh, uh, start poking uh, the catcher or the pitcher in the chest and uh, it's it's to speak to uh, one of my staff members or to me I intend to be present and if someone brings something to my attention I will definitely investigate it and I'm the appropriate person to do that so uh, I think there's a way to uh, kind of lower the temperature in the, in the environment. Um, certainly, uh, I'm not gonna tolerate any type of, of outbursts or, or threats to my team, uh, to any of the poll workers. That's just not appropriate, um, and that's not the spirit that we wanna conduct the election in. So 
fair fair for me to say you're not interfering, but you're more of a hands-on guy. Like you want to be involved. Absolutely. I I think the biggest uh, point I'd like to make to those who've been concerned about past election cycles is I'm going to be their eyes and ears. I'm going to be involved in the process and I'm committed to uh, understanding if there's a problem or a mistake. My goal isn't to blame anyone. My goal is to fix the problem. My goal is to root out what process led to this problem. And so um, their concerns will definitely have a, uh, an open ear with me. Um, I'm going to take what they see or, or what they believe they saw very seriously. And, uh, you know, that, that's going to go a long way, I think, toward improving the transparency, improving the culture of uh, the election process.